The ancient prophecies in the Bible contain appointed times or feasts that occur in cycles every year. Every year the earth is revolving around the sun, and for this reason the biblical calendar can also be represented as a wheel. The biblical calendar is divided into 12 or 13 lunar months that begin on the new moons. The main appointed times are listed in Leviticus 23. There are three appointed times in the first month, three in the seventh month, and one in the third month. The three appointed times of the first month mirror the three in the seventh month. This is most likely because the appointed times were meant to be observed over the whole earth, since true Israel is the whole earth. Also because the first month starts in the spring, and spring occurs at opposite times of the year in the southern and northern hemispheres. In April, the northern hemisphere is in spring, and usually in the first month. In October, the southern hemisphere is in spring, and usually in their first month. This means that when the Northern Hemisphere is observing the appointed times of the first month, the Southern Hemisphere is observing the appointed times of the seventh month, and vice versa. You'll notice the white highlighted regions on this wheel occur in the first month, third month, and tenth month of both the Southern and Northern Hemispheres. In the first and seventh months, we're told the rain and trumpets occur. This is found in Leviticus 23-24, the Feast of the Trumpets, Revelation 8-6, the sounding of the trumpets at the asteroid impact, and Joel 2-23, the rain in the first month. This is why this time period is a watch twice per year, once in the northern hemisphere and again in the southern hemisphere. Luke 17, 26-30 explains that the rain in the prophecy is a rain of fire and brimstone. This means that Noah's rain also represents the final event, the asteroid impact. So, in addition to the appointed times in the first and seventh months, we also watch the 40-day period of Noah's rain from the 17th day of the second month until the third month, again twice per year once for the Northern Hemisphere, and again for the Southern Hemisphere. This is explained in Genesis 7, 11, and 12, and Luke 17, 26-30. The next yearly biblical watch is the 10th month, as explained in Esther 1 and 2, Matthew 22, 2-8, Matthew 25, and Revelation 12 and 18. These prophecy parables explain how the Queen Babylon has crowned itself on earth, but God will crown the other woman, the multitude of all tribes and nations, when the millstone hits the sea. This represents the escape of the multitude at the asteroid impact, the flight of the woman in Revelation 12.14, and her crown in heaven. Esther 2.16 says she was crowned in the tenth month. So, for this reason, we always watch the 10th month for both the Southern and Northern Hemispheres. And finally, there is one more watch listed in Matthew 25, 6, Midnight. We know the midnight Jesus mentioned here does not represent an hour in the day, because he says in verse 13 that no one will know the day or hour. So, midnight must represent something else possibly the twelfth month on the biblical calendar. So there are eight major biblical watch periods each year for the rapture escape. Right now, at the posting of this video, the tenth month in the southern hemisphere starts on the new moon of Friday, July 13th, and will last until the new moon of August 11th. These watch periods are especially important in 2018, due to the ending of both the 1260 and 70 years and the recent fulfillments of Daniel 9. For more information on the biblical timeline ending now, please see the playlist Bible's Countdown to the Meteorite and Rescue linked here. Thank you so much to those who make this work possible. If you like this video, please consider providing support using the link below.
I hope you're doing well and I'll talk to you next week.